Awesome. How about detox pathways? Maybe we should mention that. I think just supporting the liver. I've seen personally, especially with kids, when we see skin issues, we'll come in with some liver support. If it's a kid who can't take pills, we'll give them some kind of a liquid liver support tincture. And I've noticed a big difference, especially under the eyes. You know, if we're talking skin, we're not just talking like bumps on the arms. We're not just talking acne. We're talking possibly like dark circles under the eyes. That's often, at least in Chinese medicine, they say dark circles under the eyes is liver. And I've actually noticed that correlate quite well when we bring up liver support, dark circles under the eyes go away. So if you're a woman every morning, you're doing your makeup and here you are doing your powder foundation or whatever the heck you're putting on under your eyes, you might not have to do that if you just support your liver. It's funny how women, they can just cover stuff up with makeup, but man, we're not going to cover up it. So we're going to see the dark circles. We need to treat it root cause. We're not just going to you know, put some powder on it. Oh yeah. And so with the we call it allergic shiners. So what, what you see is it's a lot of lymphatic pooling. So you have a lot of lymph in the face area. And a lot of times what you see is the pooling of the lymph right under the eyes. And a lot of times that's going to be food allergies. Just go on Google, type in allergic shiners, okay? And that's a lot of times because of, it's not like an aging thing. It's a lot of lymphatic stress because of certain foods. So like I mentioned, cut a lot of those big foods out. See how much that helps decrease the lymphatic pooling. You can also do things to support the lymph, right? You can do rebounding. You can do whole body vibration. You can drink ginger or burdock tea or SEAC tea, things that naturally, red clover tea, red root tea, these things are naturally support the lymph that can be helpful. But if you're doing that and you're still eating foods that are inflammatory, that may still kind of counteract it. So ideally, you know, support the lymph and cut out some of those commonly offending foods that may really help decrease that pooling underneath the eyes. That's smart. I, I didn't know the, the food connection there with the allergies. So what about the darkness? Do you think that's tied into any kind of toxicity or do you think just with the lymph in general, it's just going to appear dark just because it's stagnant no matter what? Yeah. I mean, a lot of that just has to do with the lymph. I mean, we'll pull up a couple of pictures here in a minute. Um, but anytime you really increase an immune response, you're going to just get more lymphatic pooling and you're going to see it underneath kids' eyes or yeah, you it's know, interesting. You see it in kids. And you also see it in, um, in adults too, but you know, it's people put the, you go to the spa, you put a cucumber over it. Why? Because the cucumber tell, tends to help disperse a lot of that lymphatic fluid. That's the reason why. Well, let me cool. just pull up a Google image here so you guys can see. Yeah, and so sometimes an it's dark and then right sometimes there. it's bags too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you look at the one to the left though with the little girl. That one, no, go to the, the second one there. That's what I'm used here. to seeing with people. Yeah, yeah. just that kind of yeah. darkness. Yeah, I mean, it just has to do with the increased blood flow and lymphatic pooling. It's really what it is. Wow. And just cutting that out can make a big, 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 big difference. Yep. I wonder if there's really there's got to be a histamine connection to this too. Yeah. I mean, anytime you have a food allergy response, part of an allergenic response is going to be histamine. At some Oh, go back up, go back up on the top there on that screen. Uh, at the very top of there, it said, Oh, this is interesting. So it was talking about indoor allergens. So mold could be a trigger of the allergic shiners too. I never even thought about that. Yeah. I mean, anytime you breathe stuff into that sinus cavity, right. Whether it's outdoor allergens like dander or cedar or things like that. Um, grass pollens, right? Of course, those can be a big role. Um, but, you know, you can see right here, what causes it, right? So what happens is the, the tissues and the blood vessels in the nose become swollen and a lot of excess fluid happens. People don't understand when you have a histamine reaction, a lot of times that causes things to vasodilate. So these blood vessels get swollen. So you get a lot more blood, you get a lot more lymphatic flow, um, you get a lot more immune reaction. And that's why all that stuff tends to pool right there because of all that, the sinus cavity kind of coming together right in this T-zone here. There you go. Look at that. Pollution and perfume and other irritants. So women, if there's any left listening to the podcast that still wear perfume, stop doing that. That's so bad. Do essential oils if you want to smell. Exactly. If you want a nice scent, do a good, a really good essential oil. Do a lavender. Um, do a... So you're trying to think of a bunch of other feminine herbs or feminine essential oils. If you're a guy, do rosewood or do cedar. Uh, keep it really simple. You know, there's a couple of really good blends that are out there that I like. Frankincense is a pretty good neutral one. You know, I just tend to rely on my, my nice essential oil-based deodorant. It tends to be really clean and, um, and works well. But yeah, so you want to not put in rub toxins on your skin, toxins on the fragrances, all of that can affect bags under the eyes. All of that can affect your skin too, because it's going to just create more toxicity, more stress on your liver and your body.